This snail has a special type of skeleton called a hydrostatic skeleton. Insects and spiders, like this tarantula, have exoskeletons, but we have the best option of all, an endo or internal skeleton. But what makes this type of skeleton so great? Let's find out together in this episode on the skeletal system. You're so cute. When we think of bones, most of us imagine a skeleton model like this guy or giant dinosaur bones in a museum. If you've ever seen a real skeleton or a fossil in a museum, you may think that bones are crumbly, dry, or dead. But the bones of your skeleton are very much alive, growing and changing all the time, just like all the other cells and tissues of your body. Bone is an active tissue with an extremely strong yet flexible and lightweight structure and can even repair itself if damaged. The human skeletal system is not quite as simple as the song you sing in kindergarten suggests. The head bone is actually made up of 22 separate bones and is most definitely not not connected to the neck bone, but rather to a series of small interlocking bones that travel all the way down your back. In total, the human skeleton consists of 206 bones. This flexible inner framework provides structural support to all other parts of the body, which would kind of just smush without skeletal reinforcement, like this Play-Doh person. Sorry. It's terrible. Having this framework inside of our bodies has allowed us to grow larger and have way more freedom of movement. The bones of our skeleton are separated into two categories based on their purpose and location, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton contains 80 bones, including the skull, vertebrae, and rib cage. It forms the central structure of the skeleton, kind of like your foundation, shielding the organs that you can't really live without, the brain, spinal cord, lungs, and heart. The remaining 126 bones make up the appendicular skeleton. They include the arms, hands, shoulder girdle, pelvic girdle, legs, and feet. The lower part of the appendicular skeleton protects the major organs associated with digestion. Unlike an insect's exoskeleton, even the hardest parts of your bones are alive. Let's take a look at the femur, the longest and strongest bone in your body. The main shaft is called the diaphysis, and each rounded end is the epiphysis. Almost every bone in your body is made of the same materials. The basic structural units of bone are called osteons. These are weight-bearing, cylindrical structures composed of tubes inside tubes. If you look inside of a bone, you would be able to see several different layers. The outer surface of bone is called the periosteum. This is a thin, dense membrane that contains nerves and blood vessels that nourish the bone. The next layer is made up of compact bone. It's the part you see when you look at a skeleton. Approximately 80% of every bone is compact bone. It's the hardest and strongest part of the bone and it's what allows the body to support its weight. Compact bone also protects the inner parts of the bones where many vital functions occur, such as bone marrow production. Within the compact bone are many layers of spongy bone, so-called because of its sponge-like appearance. About 20% of each bone is spongy bone, which is not quite as hard as compact bone, but is still very strong. Most often found toward the ends of individual bones, the spongy bone material is filled with bone marrow, nerves, and blood vessels. In many bones, the spongy bone protects the innermost part of the bone, the bone marrow. Bone marrow is sort of like a thick jelly and its job is to make blood cells. Bone is as strong as steel, but as light as aluminum. Each bone adjusts its size and shape during the growing process, after injury, and in response to stress. You basically get a whole new skeleton every 10 years or so. You are born with about 300 bones, but eventually some of those bones fuse or grow together to form the 206 bones that you end up with as an adult. During infancy, most bones develop from structures made of cartilage, which you may know from your nose and ears. This cartilage is soft and flexible and made of specialized cells called chondrocytes. During childhood, as you are growing, the cartilage grows and is slowly replaced by bone. In newly forming bones, those chondrocytes start dividing like mad. 
and secrete collagen and other proteins to form a bone matrix or framework for the bones to form on. After that, blood vessels work their way into the cartilage and bring cells called osteoblasts that work together to build bone. This process is called ossification. By the time you are around 25 years old, this process is complete. The lengthening of long bones is where most of our growth comes from. The ends of your bones actually grow away from each other. Near each end of a long bone is an area known as the epiphyseal plate, or growth plate, where lengthening and ossification both occur. Even though bone lengthening eventually stops, the thickness and strength of bone needs to be continually maintained by the body through the course of each year of your adult life. About 10% of your skeleton is completely broken down and rebuilt from scratch in a process called Bone remodeling. The osteoblasts we mentioned earlier are involved in this process along with a new type of cell that basically does the exact opposite job. They are called osteoclasts. They are bone dissolvers. Remodeling begins when the osteoclasts are sent through capillaries to the sites of microscopic fractures. When they settle in place, they secrete a kind of acidic ooze that dissolves minerals and proteins in bones and digests collagen. All this dissolved material gets carried back to nearby capillaries. This whole process is called resorption. And when the old bone tissue has been all cleaned up, the osteoclasts send back in the osteoblasts to start ossification. Your bones are classified into four groups based on shape, long bones, short bones, flat bones, and irregular bones. Long bones are your classic dog bone shaped bones. They are found in your arms, legs, fingers, and toes. These bones are longer than they are wide, and they are cylindrical. They move when the muscles around them contract, and they are the most mobile parts of the skeleton. Short bones are found in the wrists and ankles, and are about equal in their length, width, and thickness. Your flat bones are the thinner ones, like your sternum, or the bones that make up your skull. And your irregular bones are all the oddly shaped things, like your vertebrae, that are more specialized. Now that we know bone composition, how they grow and remodel, and how bones are classified, let's quickly look at all of the bones that make up our skeleton. The spine is one part of the skeleton that's easy for you to check out. Reach around to the center of your back and you can feel its bumps under your skin. The spine allows you to twist and bend and holds your body upright. It also protects the spinal cord, a large bundle of nerves that sends information from your body to your brain and back again. The spine is made of 33 bones in all. These bones are called vertebrae and each one is shaped like a ring. The ribs act like a cage of bones around your chest. Your ribs come in pairs and the left and right sides of each pair are exactly the same. Most people have 12 pairs of ribs that attach in the back to the spine. The first seven pairs attach in the front to the sternum, a strong bone here in the center of your chest that holds those ribs in place. The remaining ribs don't attach to the sternum directly. The next three pairs are held on with cartilage to the ribs above them. The very last two sets of ribs are called floating ribs because they aren't connected to the sternum or the ribs above them. They just hang out down there. If you're still here liking this video, let us know and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Above the ribs are a pair of clavicles, also called collarbones. Your skull protects the most important organ of all, the brain. The skull is actually made up of different bones. Some protect your brain, whereas others make up the structure of your face. Your lower jaw bone is the only bone in your head you can move. Isn't that right? Each arm is attached to a shoulder blade or a scapula here. The arm is made up of three bones, the humerus above your elbow and the radius and ulna, which are below the elbow. At the end of your radius and ulna are eight smaller bones, the carpal bones. The center part of your hand is made up of five separate bones called metacarpals. 
Each finger on your hand has three bones, except for your thumb, which has two. These are phalanges. Your legs are attached to a circular group of bones called your pelvis. The pelvis is a bowl-shaped structure that supports the spine. Your leg bones are very large and strong to help support the weight of your body. The bone that goes from your pelvis to your knee is called the femur, and it's the longest bone in your body. At the knee, there's a triangular-shaped bone called the patella or kneecap that protects the knee joint. Below the knee are two other leg bones, the tibia and fibula. The main part of the foot is very similar to the hand. Your ankle bones or tarsals connect to the five bones in your foot. These are your metatarsals. Each toe has three tiny bones, also called phalanges, except for your big toe which has only two. Could you imagine walking around with a heavy, bulky exoskeleton, like a knight in clumsy armor? Not to mention going through the awkward molting phase. Give thanks to your endoskeleton. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. Yes, I'm doing good. I need to brush your teeth. Kinda got a little, there you go. Good job. Okay, we're ready.